Good morning, friends. Today we are on page 79, lesson 17. Please make sure you are turning to the correct page. So it says right here, multiply and model. Rewrite each expression as a number sentence with decimal factors. The first one is done for you. Now, this is going to be really interesting because we haven't done decimal since module two, so or module one actually. So it's been a while, but I'm going to make sure I go over with you so you really understand. So looking at the example problem first, we are going to look at it. And it says right here, we have one tenth times one tenth. Because if you notice here, um, this is the given equation. So we're going to multiply. One times one is equal to one. And 10 times 10 is equal to 100. So how would I write that as a fraction? One tenth times one tenth. One tenth times one tenth. The one is in the tenth place. Okay? So one tenth times one tenth is equal to one thousandth. So remember the place value chart. Now, if you forget in your book, they have a place value chart, right? We remember this? We have our millions, our hundred thousands, our ten thousands, our thousands, our hundreds, our tens, our ones, our tenths, hundreds, and thousands. Okay? So that's what we're going to be doing today. So the next equation we have here says 6 times 2. So I'm going to be multiplying 6 times 2. And then I'm going to multiply 10 times 10. Now you can write it either way. If you want to write it 6, two, six tenths, times 2 tenths, or you can put it together, whichever one is easier for you. So I'm going to write 6 times 2 and 10 times 10. Okay, and 6 times 2 is equal to 12. And 10 times 10 is equal to 100. So I have 12, whoa, 12 hundredths. Uh, they don't ask me to simplify, so today I'm not going to simplify. I know we practiced that, but uh, today we're not going to simplify. We're just focusing on the decimals this time around. So if I were to write this as a decimal fraction, what I would have is 6 tenths times, just like that, 6 tenths times 2 tenths is equal to 12 thousandths. Okay, so where did we get the 6? Right here. Well, hmm, I guess you would look at this way. You would be circling 6 tenths, 2 tenths, like that. I'm not circling it because I think it would be a mess. Now, how would I fill this into the chart? So, what we know is that we got 12 hundredths. And at first, we got 6 times 2. So you're basically multiplying. 12 pieces of 100. So I am going to color that in my 12 pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And that will show me 2 tenths times 6 tenths which is equal to 12 tenths. Now we're going to move on to problem C. For problem C, we have 1 tenth times, so I'm going to put 1 tenth times 1 and 6 tenths. Ooh, tricky one. Okay, or you can even write it as 16 tenths. I think that would be less confusing. Let's do 16 tenths. I want to change it into a fraction anyways. 16 tenths. Now we're going to multiply. So I'm going to multiply my top number and then I'm going to multiply the bottom number. Okay, so we have 1 times 16 which is equal to 16 and 10 times 10 which is equal to 100. So my answer is 1600. And if I were to write this as a decimal, it would look like one tenth times. I almost made a mistake. Sixteen tenths. 
which is equal to 16 hundredths. So we would have it written like this. And that is my final answer. Okay, now we are going to fill out this chart. And what they're asking you to draw is 16 tenths or color in 16 tenths. So I'm going to color that in. Here is 10. And then I color in six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that gives you 16 tenths because this would be multiplying 1 tenths right here. And then on the bottom, what I'm multiplying is 10 tenths. And over here, I'm multiplying 6 tenths. Now I'm going to multiply for problem D. For problem D, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see better. We have 6 tenths times 19 tenths. So I have 6 tenths times 19 tenths. So I am going to multiply 6 times 19. And for my 10, I'm multiplying 10 times 10. So what I have here is I'm going to multiply 6 times 19. And I know that 10 times 10 is equal to 100. So I'm going to show you how I'm multiplying 6 times 19 on the side. So 19 times 6. 9 times 6 is equal to 54. 6 times 1 is 6. And 6 plus 5 is equal to 11. So I have 114. So I have 114 hundredths. So I'm going to make sure I write that down correctly. Now what this would look like would be I would have 114 pieces colored in. So I have 6 tenths times 19 tenths is equal to 114 tenths. If I were to color this in as a fraction, I would have 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, multiplied by 10. So this whole entire area is colored in. Okay, and then on this side over here, I would do the same thing, but this side would be only 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I would also go up 6 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Color, color, color in. Okay, awesome. So what I did here was I colored in 9 tenths. And on this side, I colored 6 tenths by 10 tenths. Now we are going to turn the page. We are on page 80. I wouldn't stress too much about the pictures. The pictures are supposed to help you, but we do want you to understand how to multiply the standard algorithm way, which is this way that we are doing. So if you're understanding standard algorithm, but you're not understanding the visual that's okay because we're going to make sure that we practice more on those. And also, um, it's, for to, it's to help you see it in your mind rather than just looking at numbers. Number two, multiply. The first few are started for you. So this one is an example of how they solve for the equation. And first, they multiply 4 times 6. Oh boy, I'm probably going to have to write really tiny if I want to fit everything. And then 10 is the denominator. And 4 times 6 is equal to 24. And 10 is the denominator. They divided 24 divided by 10, or they read it as 24 tenths. And that's how they got their final answer right here. I'm going to have to write very tiny. So the next one we have 4 tenths times 6 tenths. First, I am multiplying 4 times 6. And then I'm multiplying 10 times 10. 4 times 6 is equal to 24. And 10 times 10 is equal to 100. Okay, so I get 24 hundredths. If I were to write that as a decimal, that means that 4 is in the hundredths place. And my 4 is in the hundredths place. 
So my final answer is 24 hundredths. I forgot to write this one. I'm going to highlight this so that it is easier for you to recognize and see where those numbers are coming from. Next, we have four thousands times, sorry, four hundredths times six tenths. So first, I'm going to multiply the numerators, four times six, and then I have to multiply the denominators, 100 times 10. So four times six is equal to 24, and 100 times 10, how many zeros? One, two, three, three zeros. One, two, three is equal to 1,000. So 24 thousands is what they are asking for. The four is in the thousands place, the two is in the hundreds place, the rest of it is zero. So as long as the last digit is in the thousands place, then I put it in the correct place. So I have zero and 24 thousands. Now, moving on to problem D. For problem D, what we have here is seven times, let me write it down, seven times three tenths. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top, the numerator and the denominator. Numerator is seven times 10, and the denominator is one times 10. Okay. So 7 times 3 is equal to 21, and 1 times 10 is equal to 10. So I have 21 tenths. I'm going to write that down, 21 tenths. So that means that the 1 is in the tenths place. So 21 tenths. For problem E, I have 7 tenths times 3 tenths. So I'm writing right here, 7 tenths times 3 tenths. I'm first going to multiply the numerator, 7 times 3, and then the denominator, 10 times 10. So 7 times 3 is equal to 21, and 10 times 10 is equal to 100. So what I have here is 21 hundredths. Twenty-one hundredths. So 0 and 21 hundredths. The 1 is in the hundredths place. For this one right here, we have 7 thousandths. And I'm multiplying times 3 tenths. And I am first multiplying my numerator, 7 times 3. And then my denominator, 1,000 times 10. So 7 times 3 is equal to 21. And 1,000 times 10, how many zeros? 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4 is equal to 10,000. So I have 21 ten thousandths. So I have 0 and 21 thousandths. Tenths, hundreds, thousands. Ooh, I need to add one more zero to make that correct. No, this is good. Right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So we have twenty-one thousands. Oh, I just realized this is a hundred. But. Seven is in the hundreds place, so that's why. It's not ten thousands, it's only one thousand. So the one is in the thousands place. There you go. Answer is still correct. Next we have one or thirteen tens times five ones. So we're going to multiply that. Thirteen times five. Five times three is 15, five times one is five, plus one is six. So I get 65 tenths, which is going to give me six ones and five tenths. So my answer is six ones and five tenths. Okay, let me highlight it so you can see it more clearly. You multiply 13 times five, 
and, which give us 65, and then we multiply 10 times 1 in the denominator, which give us 10. For problem H, I have 13 tenths times 5 tenths. And I'm going to multiply 13 times 5. We already did this earlier, so that was equal to 65. And 10 times 10 is equal to 100. So we get 65 hundredths. The 5 is in the hundredths place. So first, again, we multiplied our numerator. And then we multiplied our denominator. And we got 65 hundredths. Now, over here we have 13 hundredths times 5 tenths. And again, we already multiplied 13 times 5 earlier, which gave us 65, so I'm writing down 65. And 100 times 10 is going to give us 1,000. So that is the final answer. Oh wait, I need to run in decimal form. 65 thousands. So we have 65 thousands. So 0 0.065, 65 thousands. I'm going to make sure to highlight that so you can see it more clearly. Now, we're going to read problem number three. It says here Jennifer makes 1.7 liters of lemonade. Lemonade, if she pours three tenths of the lemonade in the glass, how many liters of lemonade are in the glass? So, what I'm going to do is I am going to multiply 0 and 3 tenths times 1.7 tenths. And it's written in liters. So how would I write this as a fraction? I would write 3 times 10, 3 tenths times 17 tenths, and multiply. First, I want to figure out what 17 times 3 is equal to. 7 times 3 is 21, 3 times 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5, I get 51. At 51, 100 times 100 is equal to 100. So I have 51 hundreds. So that's what I'm writing down right here. 51 hundreds liters uh, is in the glass for lemonade. Of uh, lemonade. Oh, it's not going to fit. There we go. I should have drawn lines because look how messy this is going to be. There we go. Okay. Now problem four. Cassius or Cassius walked six tenths of three point six mile. How many miles did Cassius have left to hike? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply and then I'm going to subtract. So I have six tenths times. 3 and 6 tenths, so I'm going to write that down, 6 tenths times 36 tenths, I'm going to multiply 36 times 6, 6 times 6 is 36, 6 times 3 is 18, plus 3 is equal to 21, so we have 216, 10 times 10 is 100, so that means we have 2 and 16 hundredths, or 216 hundredths. Okay, now I am going to subtract. What am I subtracting? I'm subtracting 3.6 miles because I want to know how much is left. So I'm subtracting 3.60 minus 2.16. I need to regroup because I cannot subtract 0 minus 6. 6 changes to a 5. 10 minus 6 is equal to 4. 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. Bring down your decimal. 3 minus 2 is 1. So my final answer is 1.44 miles. Next, it says Cameron was 1.3 miles ahead of Cassius. How many miles did Cameron hike already? To figure that out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2.16, this number right here, and I'm going to add that to 1.30. Why 1.30? Because it says here that there's 1.3 miles. So 6 plus 0 is equal to 6. 3 plus 1 is 4. Bring down your decimal. 2 plus 1 is 3. 
we get 3.46. So Cameron height Three and forty-six miles. Okay, so please let me know if you have any questions. But that is all for today.